Um, my name is uh, Yong, Yong Zhong Pen. Actually, uh, everybody call me uh, by Yong. So I'm the manager for the uh, technical marketing uh, group responsible for ISA 9K. So today, uh, what we are going to discuss is really the ISA 9K uh, system architecture. So uh, what we are going to do is actually uh, uh, we are going to from some high level introduction, just make sure everybody in this room, actually if you are very familiar with uh, SR9K, get a uh, refresh refreshed of your mind. And if you're not familiar with SR9K, you have an idea what the SR9K is. And then we will go very deep into the, the, the uh, hardware architecture and also the operating system, the control plan, data plan, how the package, all, all, the, all the way deep into the technical aspect. So, of, of course, SNNK is uh, a, a very comprehensive uh, product family, right? So it's impossible to cover everything, actually, in 90 minutes. So uh, if you have more questions, you can actually uh, uh, ask me, come, come, come to me actually after the session. We can always discuss if there's anything uh, you want to actually discuss a little bit further, okay? So first, as I said, high level brief introduction of as a 9K, and then we get to the system, the hardware architecture, and after that, we are going to talk about actually the, the control plan, so how all the control plan actually hosted on the as a 9K, the operating system, all the routing protocol, how actually where they, they are hosted. And then we get to the, really the data packet processing and QS treatment for as a 9K and uh, what, what's hardware actually architecture to make all those happen, okay? And today, we're going to give a little bit discussion uh, on the TCAM um, architecture also, the, uh, why we are using TCAM, uh, why the T TCAM is so important uh, inside uh, the system itself, okay? And what the feature, which feature, uh, features are using actually TCAM and uh, uh, the, 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 how the TCAM will in, impact certain functionality of the system. And then after that, it's going to be the, the OS we will have actually on the SN9K, okay? So the SN9K, so that's um, uh, itself is a very comprehensive, let me step down to here to get more closer to, to you guys. So SN9K, it's a full actually product for, uh, portfolio. That's a router. That's the, I would say, the best router in Cisco. So it's very, the most feature rich. It actually have different size, actually different size actually to offer different data capacity. So it can be positioned in a lot of actually uh, roles, like very uh, typical as a PE, a service edge to termin uh, terminate your services, layer two VPN, layer three VPN services, BNG services, and also it can be used as a DCI, as a core router, as a peering router, right? So, and also as a WAN edge. So you, 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 you have an exit to, to the WAN, uh, you have access to, to, to some service provider uh, toward the internet, uh, toward the WAN, that can, can be used as a WAN edge. So, and also, it actually have different size. So we always from the, the, like the fixed, fixed form factor, that's actually example is this right here, the 9901, that's a, we call it pizza box. Uh, it's a fixed form factor to RU box. And all the way we have this, all the way to the full rack chassis. That's a, full rack and the uh, 22 slot chassis. So the difference among all those chassis is not only in terms of size, and also in ter terms num number of slot you can use for your nine car, right? The 22, uh, 9922, that's a 22 slot chassis, right? So uh, for the uh, 9904, it's a four slot chassis. From the name, actually you can tell, you know, we have different series in terms of chassis, 
One is as a 9,000, right? 9,000, 9,006, uh, 9010. And also we have uh, another, uh, another series is actually 9,900, 9901, 9904, 9910, 9906, and 912, 922. What's the difference? There's two different generations. So 9000 GSA, that's the first generation. 9900, that's the second generation. Difference, major difference is the back plan, the data capacity. The, the GSA can provide for each of the slot. The second generation will be much higher actually in terms of data capacity compared to the first generation, okay? So, this, um, you know, in, inside the, the ISO9K, well, uh, some other also apply to some other Cisco product. So, a very important component is the switch fabric, right? The switch fabric itself is used to transmit the packet from the ingress line car to the egress line car, right? So ISO9K, in terms of the switch fabric architecture, there's a little bit slight different actually between GSA and between product. We have the first one that's a fixed form factor, that's fully integrated. Fully integrated means actually switch fabric, control module, the control board, and also the line car itself all together. That's all integrated in one board, okay? That's uh, fully in integrated. And the second category is actually the switch fabric itself is integrated on the control module. The control module in general we call it route processor. That's why you see RP, right? But sometimes you see RSP. Why this S in the middle? Because those control module is integrated with the switch fabric ASIC. What well, means actually for those chassis, the, 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 the module, control module used in those chassis, 9,000, 9, or the 9,000 series plus 9,904, right? On the control module itself, it come with switch fabric. You don't need a separate switch fabric to make it work. That's the second category. That's actually the switch fabric integrated on the module, on the control module. And the third category is on the other, other end, is actually the control module does not have any switch fabric at all. That's why you see, for those, the control module is called RP, RP, only raw processor. The S is missing, okay? That's the difference between the RSP and RP, right? So, but how, how the packet can be tra transmitted then from the ingress line car to the egress line car? Okay, easy. We have a dedicated chassis, a uh, slot, I'm sorry, dedicated slot <coughs> to allow you to have up to seven switch fabric car <coughs> in those chassis. So those chassis, compared to actually the first two type, is totally separated totally separated. The switch fabric car is uh, totally separated from the control module itself, okay? The fourth category, we have something in between. Huh. That's complicated, right? <laughs> so, but that's, we call it hybrid, hybrid. Example is like 9906 and 9910. We have the control module which carry switch fabric. Meanwhile, we have also up to five dedicated slots for the switch fabric car. So two, two control module, each carry one switch fabric, and plus the five separate switch, additional switch fabric, you also have up to seven, up to seven switch fabric in the chassis. So that's a full category you will see, okay? So when you can come to the product, you might say, okay, oh, you get a bit confused about this, but uh, you know, um, uh, if you know this full category, it become a little bit more clear. And also, uh, if you, uh, uh, whenever you get confused, come back to this slide, you will see actually uh, what, what's the difference and, uh, uh, for each different uh, category. So this gives you a, a little bit detail on the 906. I'm not going to read it. Okay, just 
put it here for reference, okay? This is an example of Cisco chassis-based product. Okay, that's a second generation, 9906. So for all the chassis-based product, right? So the, the always there's two slot reserved for the two actually control module. So in this, you see 9906 or 9010, right? Uh, 9910, I'm sorry. So you, you will see, okay, two slot reserved for the control module, that will leave four slot for your nine car. So don't actually mix this number together. So six, that's a six total slot, two for control module, four for actually nine car. The same concept, same, same concept applied to the, the rest of actually ISR 9K family, okay? So, Last year, we just released the, our fourth generation hardware. The, our fourth generation hardware, this is actually, it includes not only the line car, right? It also includes actually the, the commons, we call it. The commons is what? Control module plus the switch fabric car. So this is the control module we just released. Actually, we call it RSP5 or RP3. So RSP5 actually with, which is, has the integrated switch fabric, RP5 is actually, uh, RP3 is actually only control module itself. It can be used in different chassis, okay? So this looks almost exactly the same as the RSP880, the, uh, the previous generation chassis, uh, the uh, control module, if you are familiar with ISA9K. Only difference is, you know, uh, all the port console, Timing port, you, you have every, uh, on this board also, right? But only difference is you remember used to have, we call the interchassis, the cluster port on the RSP880, it get removed from the RSP5 RP3 because we, we, we are not going to support every cluster anymore for SR9K, okay? So that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a difference. This gives you a little bit more detail of comparison between these two generations, okay, RSP880, RP2, versus the fourth generation, RSP5, RP3, okay? So the major difference, you see, the SE, for the SE car, the, the, the memory, and also the storage space. That gives you more, much more storage space so you can host more image on the, on the, on the uh, uh, storage, on board storage. And for the RSP, the one actually come with the switch fabric, the bandwidth is going to be different in different, actually this, RSP, the new actually uh, control module, the RSP, come with more than double of the switch capacity than the previous generation. Example, for the, if you use dual, RSP80 in, in this chassis, 9,006 nine, nine and then 9,010, you can have 800 gig per slot. But if you use RSP5, you can go up to 1.80, okay, 1.80. So it will have much more bandwidth per slot, per slot. And by the way, the RSP5 RP3 is fully compatible with the third generation nine car, internally we call Tomahawk, right? So the first generation internally we called night speed. So the night speed common, the first generation common, is fully compatible with the third actual gen generation. Okay. So in terms of nine car, again, that's why we call the fourth generation. If you ever, I think, if you come come to this before, you will, you saw this, but we, now we add fourth generation. We start with the first generation, that's called Trident, and then second generation called Typhoon. Example is, you might have a 24 by 10 gig, nine car in your, in your mode 80, mode 160, and also the 30, 36 by 10, that's a Typhoon, that's a second generation. The third generation we call Tom, Tomahawk internally, you have mode 400, mode 200, the eight by 100 gig, as, and also Skyhammer, the 12 by 100 gig, that's all actually the Tomahawk. Come down to the fourth generation, internally we called actually night speed, night speed, and we have up 
like 32 port, we can offer 3.2T now per slot, which means actually for the night speed, the, the, the card we release is actually maximum 32 port 100 gig in one whole nine card. I'm going to show you actually in the, in the slides later. And this gives you a summary of actually the third generation line car and the MPA. You know, if you are familiar with SN9K, right? So SN9K line generally is actually we have two type. One is we call, we call actually the fixed form factor. That's actually example like this, right? At the front panel, you, the, 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 the port, the number of port and also the speed are fixed. You cannot change it. Another type we call modular, which is the nine car split into two sub slot. What the same one nine car split split into actually two sub slot, and each of them depend on the port actually type and also the port density you want. You can flexibly pick we call modular port adapter MPA different type of MPA in each of the sub-slot. You can mix, mix and match. So the, the MPA we have is including all the 10 gig, 1 gig, 40 gig, 100 gig, and we just released another 32 port 1 gig also with a max sex support, okay? So that's the, 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 the concept of the, the, the modular, modular car, okay? So in terms of MPA, the MPA does not have any generation concept. The Alanka has. So for mode, all the uh, MPA can be supported on different, different actually, uh, the mode 400, mode, mode 200. It can be supported, the latest one, okay? So uh, even those, for those old actually MPA, you can still use in the Tomahawk the third generation modular car. It's mode 400, mode 200. You can still use that. Okay, this is the light speed, the fourth generation nine car we just released. You see the 32 port and the 16 port. That's two flavor, two flavor. So we released this car, the TR version. That's only the transport version, which is positioned typically for the core and uh, period. So that's a TR, and uh, uh, you will see we have, uh, I'm sorry, this here is a typo. It should be A9K, it's not A99. You know, A9K, A99, the difference is possibly somebody has a concept of five fabric, seven fabric. I'll talk a little bit later, actually, uh, what it means, okay? So, but uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, 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 different. Oh, okay, so just make sure you're still with me, right? It's not falling into sleep or something. There's a pop quiz. <laughs> okay, the question is, what's the difference between IP3 and SP5? Okay, you remember that the, we just released the, 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 the fourth generation, the nice speed generation comments? What's the, what's the difference? The first, the same. So the second, RSP5 can only be used in SR 9000 chassis. The third, RP3 can only be, only be used in the SR 9900 chassis. The fourth, RSP5 is integrated with switch fabric, but RP3 is not. Which one? Four. Yeah, fourth. Well, thank you very much. You're still with me. So uh, just uh, give you a hint. Actually, I'm going to have uh, some pop quiz. Just make sure you're still. Uh, with me, so get a little bit of refresh uh, of your mind, okay? So, yeah, uh, that's the difference. S, right? The middle S, that's a switch fabric. The RP, RP the switch fabric is not there, okay? That's our only difference. Other than that, hardware-wise, it's the same, exactly the same, okay? Okay, come down to the hardware uh, infrastructure. Uh, the, the, the hardware architecture uh, for uh, SN9K. So SN9K, it's a fully, possibly you've seen this before, it's a fully distributed uh, uh, architecture. What do we mean by that? 
What do what mean by fully distributed? You know, first, CPU. That's, uh, that's the heart of the, the, the any computer, uh, computing system, right? CPU, we have CPU uh, on the control module, of course, we have to. That will host the, the operating system to boot up the, 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 the chassis. But on each of the nine car, we have also CPU on each of the nine car, okay? So all the CPU work together to co-host the control plan functionality. So the control plan is not only sitting on the RP, RCP, the control module CPU, it's also some part of it also hosted on the nine car CPU, okay? That's in terms of control plan. So how about actually for the data processing? You know, two part. Why is really the data, when the data coming to decide how to forward it? to enforce your, 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 your QS policy, right? To, to apply the security ACL, right? Where does that happen? MP. In this, actually, diagram you can see, we have multiple MP in even one single nine car. Example, this is uh, the A by 100 gig nine car, the Tomahawk third generation. You see four MP on that nine car. So, each MP is responsible for processing the ingress and egress traffic for only the ports, physical ports, attached to, to the MP. So in this example, you have two interfaces attached to one MP. So that MP is processing the ingress, egress traffic for that two port only. So in a sense, all the data processing, right, is distributed. There's multiple component actually processing, process the, the data traffic. And also in terms of switch, switch fabric, we have central switch fabric, as we're talking about. Some central, centralized switch fabric is integrated on the control module. Some actually are actually using as a dedicated switch fabric car, right? We just discussed that. So that's a centralized switch fabric. And meanwhile, on each of the nine car, we have switch fabric on the nine car also. So that will form, a, we call it a three stage, actually switch fabric architecture. The data processing is also distributed, potentially distributed on the three different stage. We'll get uh, uh, in that a little, bit, a little bit more detail. So this gives you more detail on the, on the 32 by 100 gig nine car. So it's uh, six, 16 nanometer, nanometer, and uh, we have eight sl slides in this nine car. So I'll show you actually more detail later. And uh, one thing is actually, this nine car, we have uh, everything integrated actually uh, for, the, for the same slice. So typically in the third generation and before, we have MPU, we have the, the memory, we have a FI, a fiat, we have phi, they're all separated. So, but now for this one, they're integrated together. Why, why do we do that? Okay, because of this, the power consumption reduction. So for this nine car, the power consumption actually get reduced a lot. We can do 0.5 watts per gig, okay, so if you, yeah, put in this same chassis, put in even 8 by 100 gig uh, Tomahawk and 12 by 100 uh, gig Tomahawk, possibly this is going to be, con consumption wise, possibly it's going to be very similar. So the, the, the third generation is about 2 to 2.5 or 3 watts per, per, per gig, okay? Get reduced a lot. Okay, so this gives you a some more detail on the new MPA the one gig MPA we, we, we just released. We just, it's 32 port if you use CSFP. Uh, anybody heard about that, the CSFP? That's, so nothing but uh, a single thread, but you can have multiple channel, right, to do uh, 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 receiving and transmitting. So that will double your port to 32, that's a bi-directional multiple channel uh, actually uh, uh, optics. 
And you can use uh, the traditional, the old uh, SFP with this also, but that will reduce your port density, one gig port density to uh, only 16, okay? So keep that in mind. So, ISR9K come down to the, we're talking about MPU, we're talking about like, uh, we uh, haven't mentioned the slice yet, but one important concept for ISR9K9 car is the, the slice. There's something we call slice. So the slice is really the MPU, each MPU, and also the physical component, physical component associated to each of the MPU. In this case, the phi, one MP, MPU, and one FIA. FIA is a fabric internet, in, interconnect ASIC. That's the ASIC actually connect the MPU to the local switch fabric. So then connect to the central switch fabric, right? That's a FIA. It will also manage how your traffic get load balanced across the switch fabric, okay? So this is a slice. Why the concept of a slice is so important for SN9K? It, because, you know, you can manage your power and also bandwidth actually down to slice level. So, which means if you, you're not using this slice, the interface on the slice at all, right, you can power down that slice, really shut it down by only one single command, CRI command. That will not impact the operation or packet forwarding for the other slice will not impact at all. But by doing that, your, all the power consumption for that slice can be saved, can be saved. And also, also, if for some reason, your switch fabric bandwidth is not enough, right? Like this is 800 gig, possibly you only have 400 gig available now for some reason. We're getting into detail how you can run into that kind of situation. So, then you can shut down the slice. This is A by 100 gig line car. You can shut down two slices to make it actually four by 100 gig. Then your line car, your interface can run actually with 400 switch fabric car at a nine rate again. So you can manage also bandwidth at the slice level, slice level, right? So that's, uh, that's why it's so important. Okay. This give you a detail of the new uh, uh, 32 port 100 gig line car. You see, the slice concept apply everywhere. So this nine car at 32 port, you can, you can see it's a eight MP, that's eight slice for this nine car. Like 32 divided by, by, by eight, that's four 100 gig interface on each of the MP. The same slice concept you can, you can, can be applied here. Now, from, you can start seeing seven fabric and five fabric, okay? At SNK, we have seven fabric car, five fabric car. What's, why, what's the difference? Uh, I, I, I actually uh, 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 discussed this before, right? So at SNK, what's the maximum switch fabric car we can have in at SNK? Up to seven up to seven, so potentially for a nine car, you can have up to maximum seven physical connection to your switch fabric, right? But uh, for backward compa compatibility, if to make the, for the, for the, for the actually 9,000 series chassis, right? We, we don't have seven fabric connection. So we have, can have up to four, five switch fabric connection. That's why we have to have the five fabric car to make it backward compatible with the 9000 series chassis. So five fabric car is actually you, from the back plan, you really only have connection to the first five switch fabric. So the, from, from the, the PID of the nine car itself, you can tell it's five fabric or, or seven fabric. If you start with 899, that's a seven fabric. If you start with 89, zero, A9K, right, A9K, it's actually five fabric, five fabric. You can use the fiber, fiber, fiber fabric in all the chassis, 
but the same fabric cannot be used in the 9000 series chassis. Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a key. So let's just give you a summary, actually, what's the, the, the key point of this, this nine car. I'm not going to read through this. I just keep this here if you come back for reference, okay? So this is a 16, actually, port 100 gear nine car we, we, we just released. This is a five fabric, five fabric. So as you see, for each of them, you have connection to five of the first five switch fabric uh, card, okay? Switch, fa switch fabric card. This car have four slides, four slides. Again, you can manage everything at a, uh, the, the power and bandwidth at a slice level, slice level, okay? So the bandwidth, keep in mind, if you use the same nine car in the, in the 9010, 9006, the bandwidth could be a little bit different. If you look at between these two, right? This band, in the second generation chassis, the bandwidth available is going to be more than the first generation chassis. If you uh, look at this, look at this, compare this, but no need to worry. So even you put this 1.6T line car into the 9000 series, right? The switch fabric bandwidth is still 1.8T. That's more than what you, you need, what's required to support nine rate, right? You only need 1.6T for nine rate. So you don't have to worry about the bandwidth, so it can still run at a full nine rate, okay? So this again gives you a detail, okay? So if you zoom down, right? Zoom down to the nine car to each of the slides and uh, the nine car itself. So the nine car, of course, we mentioned, each nine car will have CPU, right? So the CPU will host some of the, 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 the control player uh, functionality also. So, but meanwhile, the important component of the, the nine car and also for the data processing, as I just mentioned, is the MPU. All the forwarding decision, layer two or layer three, is actually made by the NPU. All your, your policy, your, your SLA, actually the, the QS policy enforcement is done by the NPU. All the ACL security, actually uh, ACL and also the, the, the PBR rerouting decision also made by the NPU. So the NPU is the heart of the data packet processing. So that's very important component, okay? And next one, you see the TM. TM, we call it traffic manager. That's traffic manager, that's a dedicated, actually, queuing ASIC attached to each of the MPU. So all the queuing related, actually processing, is done by the TM, by the TM. This is, we have, Actually, you, you possibly ever heard of like VOQ, virtual output queue, also this concept, right? That concept is a little bit different from the, what the queuing I'm talking about here. The VOQ, we also use a VOQ, but the VOQ is an internal mecha mechanism to actually uh, 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 guarantee the priority to avoid actually a head of block a problem. But this queuing I'm talking about here is user controllable queue. It's actually what you configured. If you configure Shipper with something, it will actually have a queue here. That's the user configurable queue I'm talking about. That's processed by the TM, okay? Another is FIA. FIA, FIA is Fabric inter in Interconnect ASIC, right? It's not only interconnect, the MPU to the local switch fabric, and also will manage, we just have will queue, and also manage, forgot all those fancy names, but it manage actually how the packet get transmitted across the switch fabric from the ingress nine car to the egress nine car. How you know the balance, the, 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 the data packet, and across multiple multiple switch fabric link. 
We said we have up to seven switch fabric, right? Then you have multiple switch fabric link and how to load balance all the packet on all the switch fabric link so to make more efficient use, use of the, the switch fabric. That's a VOQ. So meanwhile, if you zoom down further into the MPU, this is for MPU, right? The MPU, we have actually a forwarding chip on the MPU for all the processing. Meanwhile, we have different memory set for different purpose. So one important one is the lookup memory code, right? That's the, what the memory to host the, your FIB, your forwarding information, that's a hardware actually a forwarding table, that's a FIB, and also the MAC address table, that's for, FIB is for layer three forwarding, and MAC address is for layer two forwarding, right? So that's actually hold, hold by year. So we, you know, as a 9K, for each type of 9K, we come with different, two different flavor, right? We have TR, we have SE, right? The difference between TR and SE, again, one is for the service edge, that's SE, to terminate all the services, has much higher scale. And TR is for the core facing, core transport, and for the peering, as I have much less scale. So between these two cars, the local memory, size of the local memory is exactly the same. So in term, that, what, what, what does that indicate? So in, the, in, in, in terms of FIB scale and MAC scale, that's the same. Regardless, it's TR or SE, right? But then come down to this, that's the differentiator. So we have TCAM associated to each of the forwarding chips. We have free memory, that's actually the packet buffer. That's a packet buffer available for each of the interface and the MPU, and stats memory. So those actually, any feature dependent, depend on those actually as resource is going to be different. Give you an example number of sub-interfaces. And what we are going to go into more detail on the TCAM's architecture also you will see, okay, some feature will be impacted. And also the, the packet buffer, TR for Tomahawk, right? TR is 100 millisecond buffer, but for the SE, that's 200 millisecond, right? So those, those will be different, okay? That's why, so come down to that, you can anybody ask you, FIB and, uh, and the MAC address, no, no difference at all, okay? So this, we talk about this three, three stage, the fabric architecture, right? We have switch fabric on the nine car, we have the central switch fabric, the, and uh, we have actually switch fabric on the egress nine car, that's three stage. And meanwhile, you know, somebody will ask, you know, you know, you, 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 you in same chassis, you're gonna have Unicast traffic and multicast traffic, right? How these two compete with each other in terms of the switch bandwidth? So the uh, good news is for SR9K, we separate them. So the unicast traffic and the multicast traffic, the switch fabric for, for these two different types of traffic are separated. One reason is actually most of the time you want to guarantee your unicast traffic, right? So that's give you actually more, uh, more flexibility how you can process your Unicus traffic and uh, you, if you want, actually put the priority of your Unicus traffic, uh, Unicus traffic over the Maticus traffic. So, so they are using different switch fabric physically, physically, not logically, okay? This is an example of the, the, the switch fabric car based chassis. Like, 9906, 9910, 9912, and 9922. The, you have up to, we have to up to seven switch fabric car in the chassis. That's why you see the connection, each of the slot has connection to, to actually uh, each of the, the switch fabric car. And for SFC3, that's the, the, the latest, the nice speed generation, uh, switch fabric, each of the switch fabric car can provide 600 gig data bandwidth per slot. So that will give you total is six multiple by, uh, 600 multiple by seven, that's 4.2 T 
4.2T total data bandwidth actually available if you are using SFC3, right? The pre previous generation is SFC2 that will give you actually 200 gig each switch fabric car to each slot. You know, you get tripled. So in that sense, you can do the calculation, right? If once one switch fabric is gone, then it gets reduced by 600, 100, right? Another is gone, re reduced by 1.2T. Another gone, it reproduced, right? You can do the math. So then in that sense, you can see, even with the 3.2T, the 32-port, 100 gig line car, we have N plus one switch fabric redundancy with the, for those chassis, okay? A little bit different is for the 9,000 series, the ninth of the first generation, right? The connection are different. Although we still have three stage, but you know, the switch fabric is integrated on the, chair, on, the, on the control module itself. Actually, on each of the control module, we have two set of switch, uh, switch, uh, switch fabric ASIC, two set. This two set is two, two physical set. For, if you use the RSP in the 9904, or, or 99, no, no, I'm sorry, 9906 and 9910, only one set will be used, okay? But if you're using in other chassis, then full two set will be used. That's why you see the connection as to, for each of the RSP, as actually has one, one physical connection to each of them, each physical connection has two channels. So that's one, two, to the, one, the first RSP, and the, the other two to the, the, the second RSP. That's how you can have for the RSP A80, if you have here, uh, this is 200, 200, 200, 200, that's 800, okay? So the same concept apply. Okay, now we have the latest generation uh, uh, comments, right? How about if that you use together with the third generation? You use the SFC3, that's the fourth generation commons. If you're using actually all those cards together, this is the fourth generation card, and this is the third generation card. Internally, this is a night speed card, this is the Tomahawk card, right? So how this can work together? Again, it's the same. For the night speed, you have 600 gig on each of the connection. For the Tomahawk, you also have the 200 gig. The reason is actually the, you still have the older, actually, switch fabric on the Tomahawk 9 car. They can work together, no problem, okay? But the bandwidth for each of the 9 car is gonna be different. But it doesn't matter because, you know, for Tomahawk 9 car, right, your front panel date bandwidth requirement is still less than the bandwidth, the, switch, the total switch fabric bandwidth, right? Yes, that will not impact your uh, operation at all, okay? So, we talk about three, five fabric, seven fabric, right? So now, another question is, how these two then work together, right? We can put three, five fabric and seven fabric in, in one single chassis. So, you see, the five fabric has a connection to the, only the physical connection from the back plane, only to the first five, switch fabric, right? The five fabric. This is seven fabric. Has con or a connection to the, the full seven switch fabric car, right? Then what happened? From traffic perspective, if you have seven fabric to seven fabric, all the connections are going to be used for unicast actually uh, traffic. Still, from, five, uh, from seven to seven. From seven to five, only the first five will be used. From actually the, 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 the multicast traffic is going to be used the first five physical connection only, okay? But in terms of bandwidth, this is very important. This, uh, you, sh you should be aware of this. In terms of bandwidth, it's going to be a little bit different. If you put five fabric and seven fabric together, the bandwidth can only go with the small, smallest common, which means only the five switch fabric car 
bandwidth can be counted. In this case, example, uh, I think, yeah. In this case, so you put them together, 600 gig each channel for the 3.2T, but you come with actually five fabric cards in the same chassis. Then the total bandwidth, switch fabric bandwidth available for this car is going to be five multiplied by 600 only. That's 3.0T, okay? Keep that in mind, very important, that's bandwidth. What's the impact? That will reduce, because this 3.2T, 32 port, 100 gig, right? That requires at least 3.2T switch fabric in order to run every port at a nine rate. So if you don't have enough switch bandwidth, switch fabric bandwidth, then this actually, the, 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 there will be a rate limiter applied at the in, MPU level, MPU level. So the, you cannot run all the full port at 100 gig. But it applies the MPU level, example for this, you get 3.2T divided by how many slides in this car? Remember, 34, eight, right? Divide eight, that's give you each slice 375 gig but you have 400 gig interface, right? So the good news is, you know, the bandwidth are shared across 400 gig interface. So the chances you run into like, all the four port will be at 100 gig at the same time, it's rare. So most of the time you don't have to worry about it, or worry about it, but if you really want to enforce, guarantee the bandwidth for each of the the slice, how can you do that? How can we do that? We can manage the bandwidth at the slice level. Simple, shut down one slice for this nine car. So then you're going to have 2.8T versus 3T available, then everything will be run at the nine rate, okay? So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's how if you, um, oh, I guess, well, this is too easy, right? So another pop case, yeah, good. I think everybody is still with me. Uh, that's, that's very good. So uh, in a ISA nine nine twelve chassis with one a nine nine thirty two, that's a thirty two port one hundred gig nine car, and a nine k the sixteen port. This is seven fabric. Is this is a five fabric? Okay, by name you can tell a nine k a nine nine, and seven SFC three with. Uh, three, uh, seven SFS3 switch fabric. What is the total switch bandwidth, uh, fabric bandwidth available for this 32 port, uh, uh, port 100 gig nine car? Is that 4.2T? That's a seven, because seven fabric by six, uh, by 600 gig, 4.2T, 3.2T, or 1.0T? Yeah, you got it. Okay, 3.2T, three, 3 right? Well, I should make it a little bit harder <laughs> for you guys. <laughs> so, but that's good. Okay, you got the idea, okay? So, come down to the contr uh, control plan. Uh, the, you know, SN9K is the, the fully distributed architecture. As I said, we have CPU on the control module, right? I have CPU on each of the nine car. So, the control plane itself is also distributed. You see, there's, some con control module functionality is hosted on the RP, the control module CPU. Uh, incl that includes all the like, routing protocol, your IGP, your BGP, all the process, right? And also you have MPS, IODP running, uh, IGMP, PIM, the, they are all actually running and hosted on the control module CPU. And also you have nine cards, there's some control, control protocol, control plane functionality are hosted on the nine car CPU only. Example is ARP. Your ICMP, if you ping, actually only command is accepted at the RP level, but actually the ping packet is generated by the nine car CPU. So BFD, NetFlow. NetFlow is one heavy on the nine car CPU. So all the cache, all the all the flu information maintenance 
flow table is maintained by the NANCAR CPU. So OAM, CFM, NATO protocol, and even some of the, the functionality can be even further offloaded on the MP. You see, this system is totally distributed. It's actually, this is the only way you can, we can provide high skill and also high performance from this platform. If everything is centralized, you know, you are going to have trouble. If you imagine a lot of up, up actually uh, requests, all of a sudden come to the central uh, CPU. Your, your CPU is going to be choked, possibly, right? And also if uh, plus MAC address learning come, man, that's, that's going to be a, a disaster. One thing I want to actually really emphasize is LPTS. So have you ever heard of LPTS before? No? How about control plane placer? The old iOS way is control plane placer, right? That's the same. So we call local packet transfer service. Actually, that's the mechanism we use for SN9K to protect your control, control plan. How we, can we achieve that? Is actually for each of your control protocol, right? We are going to program a policer to re-limit it, re -limit the number of packet can be pointed or can be forwarded to the central, to the CPU for processing. That's how we control it. So this LPTS, that's again, you know, in some case, it's a TCAM resource, actually a uh, consumer. So that's why when you come to, to SN9K, ask about a BGP skill, somebody is really confused, hey, BGP skill, why the BGP skill has certain limitation? It's totally control plane functionality, right? Why? That's because of the LPTS. Because we cannot just actually launch the B BGP, make it work, we have to protect it. That's why we have to program for each of the BGP session, we have to program at least one entry, sometime two, to actually re-limit the, the BGP session. You know, in case of DDoS attack, right? Some malfunction, we don't want your control plan to melt down. That will have much bigger in, impact on your uh, network, right? So that's because of IPTS, right? We'll talk a little, little, uh, a little bit more detail in that. Uh, okay, so for the layer three, layer three, this is for the layer three control plan. You know, layer three, you know, at RP level, we have routing protocol, right? Routing pro protocol can be learned by different way, IGP, static route, BGP, right? That's actually will construct the, we call it routing table, or in a fancy word is route information base, RIB. A lot of people talk about RIB scale, right? That's really the, how, how much route you can host in the, in the, in the you can hold in the, in the uh, routing table. And we have the label information. Label switching is very popular today. And uh, we have label switching database also that will hold all the label information. The label can be actually LDP by all the label distribution protocol, right? RCBPTE, BGP also for the LU. And now we come to the signal routing. That's IGP, right? Distributed label for signal routing, right? That's all host hold in the SP, SD. After all those tables get constructed, every, all the information will be downloaded to the Nanka CPU, and what the Nanka CPU will do? It will merge that information. Those inf information are all layer three. There's no layer two encapsulation information in those table, right? So to have the corresponding layer two, you have to have the app. The where the app hosted, Lanka CPU, the app will construct this adjacency information table, and this information will be combined with actually all the routing information and the label information, construct, record, shadow copy of the forwarding table. This is a software copy. 
on the Nanka CPU forging table. And after this is constructed, then this information will be programmed by the Nanka CPU into the MPU to form the hardware forging information. That's called hardware FIP table and also the adjacency table. Okay, so after those information are programmed, so all your data packet, when you come to the MPU, it does not, the forwarding and processing itself, does not involve any of the CPU at all. That's how we can have high performance, right? If every packet coming, we have to involve the CPU, you know the CPU, right? So it's powerful, but sometimes it's slow, right? So that's why all the information will be actually downloaded and programmed on the MP, okay? That's for the layer three forwarding. Layer three forwarding, it happens this way. How about layer two? Layer two, it's easy. MAC address, MAC address table, right? Layer two forwarding. SNIK can be used as a layer two also. So, but MAC address, huh, it's not that easy actually. MAC learning, what's, what's the beauty of layer two? It's actually, there's no configuration, no, no protocol for the, for the uh, forwarding table, right? It's based on the, the data packet to do the MAC address learning. So, that's actually very resource consuming. The MAC learning for SNIK is happen on each of the MPU. MPU is processing the MAC learning, like packet come into the MPU, it will check the source MAC address. If it's already in the, in the MAC table, it will skip. If it's not in the MAC table, it will take the source MAC and put that in the MAC table. After that, it will trigger a flooding of this newly added MAC address to every MPU. That's the second step. So the MAC learning, the MAC address is going to be Glo global, so it's actually system-wide. So the MAC address scale, if you're talking about two meaning, it's not per MPU based. The MAC address table, the same MAC address table has to be synchronized across all the MPU in the system, okay? This is for the layer two. Also for some of the functionality, like the BFD, right? Very important for the, for the, for the uh, failure detection, right? So BFD also hosted some part on the Lanka MPU, and the major part is the BFD session, and the session update itself, BFD hello itself, is actually handled by the Lanka CPU, right? And even further, to achieve smaller timer interval, if you want to do like 3.3 millisecond BFD, BFD uh, uh, hello timer, right? You, the, the BFD itself can even further offload it, we call called hardware offloading, to the MPU. So MPU will maintain the BFD session uh, state and also it will process the BFD actually hello packet. Okay, so, oh, another pop quiz. I didn't expect this. So, in a as a 906 system, which has a two RSP, four line car, and a five switch fabric car, how many total CPU are available to host as a 9000 control plane functionality? Is that two, four, six, or 11? Six. Six, right? So yeah, the CPU is available on not only the control module, that's a two control module, and also available on each of the nine car. So the Control plan, SNIK control plan functionality get distributed actually among those CPU, right? Among those CPU. Okay, good. Okay, date packet processing. So, uh, SNIK, uh, regardless of the packet, where the packet is coming from and where it's destined, we follow a uniform logic to process the, the, the packet itself. We have, uh, uh, it doesn't matter the packet coming from one MP is destined to another uh, nine car, or it comes from the same MP, it's going out from the same MP but different interface. The packet itself will be always forwarded toward, toward the central, central switch fabric first. 
in, in another word, in SR9K, there's no concept of local switching, local switching. And also, we have ingress processing and egress processing, okay? So the packet can be processed twice by ingress and egress. That's why you, a lot of time you can hear, oh, is this an ingress feature or is this egress feature? That's why, right? Ingress processing, that's an ingress feature. Egress processing, that's an egress feature, right? So this gives you a detail on actually how, what's being processed at each of the point inside the SR9K. So for the phi, you see, if you have MACSAC, MACSAC is pro functionality is provided by the phi. If you have MACSAC, it will be hand a process here, decryption, encryption on the phi. And if you OTM, WAN phi, LAN phi, all those functionalities will be here. Line clocking will be on the phi also. As I said, right, the MP is the key in component to make the, the forwarding decision and also to enforce all your QS, ACL, and have the PBR, ABR, and URPF actually checked, right? That's the, the ECMP hashing, and also if it's a control, control packet, that's MPU will check. If it's a control packet, it will punt the packet to the actually, uh, 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 to the, to the actually uh, the CPU for processing, right? So, FIA, uh, TM, that's uh, the dedicated ASIC for the, for the queuing, right? And uh, FIA is actually the, the interconnect between the MP and the uh, uh, switch fabric. So it also manage how you can load balance the transmit the packet across switch fabric. We get a little bit in detail in there. On the egress side, the similar thing happened, right? Very similar happened. So we have the egress processing, this very similar processing on the MPU also, right? So, but for SN9K, we support some functionality are supported on the ingress side, some functionality are supported on the egress side. That's a queuing example. Not all the nine cars support ingress queuing. Egress queuing, yes but some nine car support in ingress queuing. Actually, some nine car does not support ingress queuing, okay? So that's, there's a difference. So to transmit the packet across the switch fabric, right, we want to guarantee there's no oversubscription of the switch fabric bandwidth available. If you have oversubscription, then you might run into trouble that your packet before even your your QS policy get enforced, then the packet get dropped. In, the, in another word, your high priority packet might be dropped randomly. So we don't, we don't want, want that happen. So that's why actually we have this arbitration process. It's a credit-based process to guarantee actually the bandwidth um, uh, 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 of the, the switch fabric. So what happens is when the ingress fee has some actually packet to, trans to be transmitted, it will check with the central arbiter, we call it arbiter, so uh, the central arbitrator, and then to check if there's enough resource on the egress fee to process the packet. If yes, then the fabric will be granted. A credit basically will be returned to this fee, and then the ingress fee will forward the packet toward the egress fee, egress fee, should have enough resource because it actually conform it, and it will process the packet and forward it to the MP. Then release the credit back to the central arbitrator. That's how we can grant it as credit-based, the simple, right? Uh, based actually mechanism. Load balancing, actually unicast, for unicast, we are doing poor packet-based load balancing. You remember, we have multiple physical link from the ingress to the switch fabric, right? So how you can load balance the packet across multiple physical link? So to make it more efficient use of the, uh, the switch fabric bandwidth. For unicast, we actually do a poor packet-based load balancing. 
In that sense, we might run into actually out of order problem, right? For the same flow, maybe some packet goes through this physical link, some packet goes through the other physical link, physical link. then if you can reach the destination, uh, the, the egress via, the order gets shuffled, right? But for the same flow, that will give us some problem, right? So that's why for unicast traffic, each pack, unicast packet, we have a sequence number. Actually, when we send it out to the, to the, to the, to the fabric, and then on the ego sphere, we are going to reassemble it, put them back in order based on the sequence number. So that will totally avoid the out of order problem you, have, you might have, right? I totally avoid. For the ulicast, for the multicast, it's a little bit different. Ulicast, we don't do arbitra arbitration. We don't do the credit based. Then we just send as best effort, okay? In that sense, for unicast traffic, out of order, how can we avoid that? So that's why we, instead of doing per packet based load balancing, we are doing per flow based load balancing. The same flow always use the same actually physical link. That's the same SG, right? Source group, the same SG flow. We always use the same physical link across the switch fabric. In that sense, you don't have out of order problem. Okay, for the QS, so, we have actually the VOQ for each of the destination port. So this is the VOQ, always from MP, MP that's a customer uh, a configurable queue, and it got come to the VOQ, that's all the queue inside SNNK has always has a set of priority together. So each queue has four priority, P1, P2, P3, and best effort. So your actually packet with different priority will go into different priority queue, <coughs> okay? At, that's enforced all the way actually through the system, you see, on each of the component. So for each of the destination, there's one specific set of view queue associated. That's why when you have traffic congestion on one interface, it will not have block the traffic to the other interface. So this is how we use the VOQ to avoid head of nine blocking, we call it, right? It's head of nine blocking. So this congested on this interface, that can propagate back to the ingress via, right? But the traffic to the other interface still can flow through. That's how we can enforce the priority and actually avoid head of nine blocking. Hierarchy, the hierarchical, you know, we always SNNK internally have five layer of hierarchy, uh, architecture for uh, QS, but uh, user controllable, user con configurable as three level. What does that mean? Actually, we can do a parent, a grandparent uh, policy that call the parent policy. And the parent policy in turn actually will call the child policy. You can go three level. Grandparent call the parent, and then parent call the, 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 the actually uh, uh, ch child. Three level hierarchy, that's always there. Classification, so that's very important. What's the criteria we, what, what, what information we can use to classify the, a packet? Depend on different, different actually packet type, it's going to be a little bit different. Like the layer two, layer three, that's a field we can use to actually classify the packet. And even internally, we can have an internal discard, uh, discard class and also Q, QS group. If you ever used that before, if you want to carry some information like layer two, your layer two uh, uh, priority, actually internally from the ingress interface to the egress interface, but your, your, the QS, the, the priority, the, the layer two header has been popped on the ingress. How can you do that? You can actually set the QS group and use that internal variable, carry it over, that can be accessed. When you set it from the internal uh, ingress interface, it can be accessed on the egress interface also. 
as a global variable. So you can actually carry the, that value over, even though the layer two header has been popped actually at an ingress interface. Okay, that's a mechanism, you can, you can do that. So, okay, what's an impl implicit the default be behavior, right? So if you, you didn't set any priority explicitly, then this is going to be actually the default trust behavior. For the layer three, we use the DSCP. We take the DSCP actually value to, to use that as a priority inside the box. For the MPS, we use the outer, the label, outer label EXP bit. For the layer two, we use the outer, you might have multiple VNN, but we use a outer uh, cost actually value to do that. And tag, if it's untagged, layer two, what happened? Untagged, we don't have any VNN carried, right? There's no priority value in the, in the, in the header itself. Always untagged, we treat it as cost equal to zero inside the, uh, the, the, the box itself, okay? Queuing. So when we talk about queuing, we, we have, you know, always confused. Actually, what feature actually really involves the queuing actually uh, functionality? This is the list. So uh, and what's supported, potentially supported actually on each of them. All those configuration and functionality in SN9K will require a queue actually functionality. So let's say shipping, if you configure shipper, don't confuse the shipper with the policer, okay? Shipper is different from the policer. A policer does not require a queue, but shipper does. Although they are actually all do the rate limiter stuff, but uh, shipper is a queuing functionality, policer is not. So for some, example, for some of the nine car which does not support ingress queuing, can you configure the shipper on the ingress side? No. But can you configure a police on the ingress side? Yes. So the typical way you do the, the queuing, the, the police, the, the real enforcement is actually you apply the police on the ingress and apply the shaper on the egress. Well, that's the typical way you do it, okay? So that's here. Also the priority queue, it will require actually the queuing also, keep that in mind. The, re the rest is straightforward because you, you already see the keyword, right? So by default, all the interface will have a default set of queue created. It, no matter you configure it or not, the default queue, interface queue already, always there for each of the physical interface, okay? So that default interface queue will have full priority automatically, okay? Full priority. So if you don't have anything configured, any queue configured, this queue will be used for all your traffic on that interface, okay? But if you have your, your, your customized queue configured, right? Example for this, you apply a queue on the main interface, right? Which cover the class default also, right? Then your default interface queue will not be used for the data traffic, the configured one will be, okay? The, but it's still, here, it's still there, it's not going to be removed, okay? And also, also, your control traffic, okay, local, local generated control traffic is going to go use this one. That's how you can prioritize your local generated control traffic over even the data traffic, okay? So, in another case, if you have configured the, your policy on some sub interfaces, but still have traffic come to the main interface, then all the default queue and also the configured queue will be used. So the configured queue will be each queue, because you, each of the, the policy will create a queue for each of the sub-interface, the sub-interface will use their own queue. Meanwhile, the, all the traffic come to the main interface will use the default queue. 
okay? That's how the, 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 the queuing is working actually on the interface. When you configure or if you're not configuring it. Oh, okay. Another one. So for the intact layer to frame, what's the priority value used when the frame is processed inside SM9K? Is that two, zero? I heard something zero? Yeah, zero. Because intact, there's no priority, right? So no, 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 no value. So uh, then uh, it's going to be, uh, we use as zero as uh, the default for untagged layer two frame, okay, layer two. Zero. TCAM, ha, huh, that's interesting. Why do we need TCAM? So traffic, one important thing is before you can treat different traffic in a different way or different priority, what's the most important thing you have to do before you can do that? Traffic classification, right? If you cannot classify the traffic, how can you actually treat, treat them differently? So the TCAM is the very important component in SN9K for traffic classification. That's why you see the typical place we have the TCAM associated, might use, invo involve the TCAM is the ACL. If you apply ACL, ACL has a classification, right? You have, ACL have a rule applied to different traffic that involve classification. QS involve classification. That apply on the egress side also. And also on the ingress side, huh, we also have some kind of interface level classification, right? If you configure an interface, you might do encapsulation, DAW and Q, blah, 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 right? How can that be classified? Now, it's a little bit different depending on which car you're, not, you're talking about. But for some of the nine car, it could be TCAM actually dependent. It could be dependent for layer two interface classification. IFIB, IOPTS. IFIB is actually where the IOPTS happen. Uh, we call internal FIB, right? So we just discussed IFIB, the internal TCAM, the, the IOPTS, we are going to program some policer, right, into the TCAM itself, some classification, some rule into the TCAM. So we can really limit it. The, 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 the control packet pointed to the, uh, to the RP, right? So that might involve the TCAM also. So TCAM, for the traffic classification, it might be used by a lot of features, okay? So this is actually how the process, how the TCAM lookup happen. So typically, for a data traffic, when the data traffic has come in, we use the header information to construct something we call lookup key. The lookup key, depending on your, your packet, can be different length, different length. Can be eight, 80 bit, 160 bit, 320 bit, or 640 bit, depending on what type of traffic you have. And then we have an internal mask to mask out, okay, for this feature, there's some information I don't care, right? So to mask out those information you don't care, and that will deal with the information you care. And then you actually look through the TCAM. The TCAM is actually where the rule program. Let's say if you uh, configure a class map applied in, in, a, in, a, in a QS policy, there'll be a rule created in the TCAM. If you apply the SEO in the interface, there'll be a rule created on the, on the interface also, right? Uh, on the, uh, in the TCAM also. So this key, lookup key, will be matched against the TCAM content, then result is a hit or miss, right? Based on the re result, you know what type of traffic it is. So for the, this is how the, the actually the TCAM is uh, architected for the first generation nine car. The TCAM itself is organized in we call it actually a bank set. Each bank set actually have like it looks like this: have 512, 
lines of arrays, four array, actually for each of them, actually for each of the, 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 the bank set, you have four array. So each array, each of the block, right, by default, it's going to be 20 byte. 20 byte, translate is 160 bit. So the size, the smallest allocate, allocatable uh, TCAM size is 20 byte, okay? So the TCAM itself can be multiple set block, can be also put together for a larger size, we have 20 byte or 80 byte. So 20 byte is 160 bit, 80 byte is 640 bit. So the 160 60 bit area, the 20 byte area, we call it ODS2. And the 640 or 80 byte area, we call it ODS8. I'll show you the partition. So you can see, there's different functionality. Now, uh, functionality is going to be associated with different area, okay? Different area. We have layer two partition potentially for the Tom Hawk 9 car, the third generation. We have reserved layer two partition. That's for the layer two, layer two actual interface classification. So that size will decide what's the max scale we can support in terms of actually layer two sub-interfaces on each of the MP, okay? And we have ODS2, that's 160 bit, and ODS8, that's 640 bit. So for the ODS2 and the ODS8 region, right, we might have one area for the split it for, that's IFA partition, we call it. That's for the LPTS, that's reserved, dedicated for IPTS. That size of that region, or this region, will actually decide the BGP, the control, some control protocol scale, like BGP scale for those, okay, IPTS. But fourth generation, this partition and also the IFIB partition has been moved out. So the IFIB, IFIB IPTS, and also the layer two classification does not require any TCAM resource anymore for the fourth generation, the newly released generation nine car, only the third generation will require it. This gives you a map on which feature really use which region. This is very important. You see we have 160 region as ODS2, right? All your IPv4 related feature are using the 160 region. We have 640 region, the partition, we also, also call it ODS8. That's actually all your IPv6 feature is going to use those region, partition. Plus, these two exception, EDPL. Any, anybody heard EDPL? As, as, that's actually the, the Ethernet, the data packet, data pass actually loop back. Okay, you can look back on the MP level, uh, the, the, the Ethernet packet. And also the BGP flows back. Ah, if you have peering, that's very important. Regardless, it's IPv4, IPv6, each rule of BGP flows back rule get pushed, it's going to take an entry from this partition, 640, IPS, IPv6 actually partition. Keep in mind, regardless it's IPv4 rule or IPv6 rule, it will all go to this region, not the IPv4 region, okay? Very important. This give you an example, you can, you can actually, if you have a Cisco router, you can always use this command to check all the partition, right? This for the third generation, you use this command, right? This will give you example of output. That's layer two, ODS uh, two, ODS eight. That's for IPv4 typically, IPv6, and this is for layer two classification, right? But for the fourth generation, the nice B9 car, the command change a little bit, but give you same similar res uh, output. 
as a command, OK? So this is summary. I'm going to skip this quickly. So we already go through this, uh, just here for your reference. OK, now another pub quiz. As we discussed, most of the IPv4 related feature use ODS2 partition, and most of the IPv6 related feature use ODS8 partition. When BGP flow spec is configured for IPv4 traffic, and the rule has been pushed, in which TCAM region are the rules programmed? Is that going to layer two partition, ODS8 common, ODS2 common, or ODS2 IFIB? Which one? Yeah, you got it, ODS8. So very important, the, the, that actually ODS8 partition size will decide how many BGP flow spec rule we can support, okay? We can support. Okay, so five minutes, we have last uh, section to go, okay? So, but this is actually, I think you are very familiar with this. It's about the operating system on SR9K. That's iOS XR, and also now we are actually migrating to I iOS XR 64-bit, right? So I'm going to skip this, come down to the difference between the iOS XR and XR 64-bit. This is what we had for the iOS XR. We also call 32-bit XR. This is really a QNX-based, actually, architecture. The QNX is an older flavor of the U, uh, Unix-like, actually, uh, kernel. We use that, actually, we use it, actually, until now. That's actually multiple, multiple process uh, 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 system, uh, but uh, we does not support actually any Linux like it's not a Linux kernel. It does not support any Linux like actually uh, operation or functionality like virtualization. But for 64 bit, right? So we this is what the direction we are moving toward. We have actually leverage the Linux the standard Linux kernel. We use a Linux kernel and actually put our operating system on top of that. So we leverage also the virtual machine, the, the virt, virtual, virtual machine capability, the virtualization capability of the Linux, right? So we have, this is on the RP, this is for the nine car. We have actually two VM, one for the, the iOS XR control module, another for the admin plan. So that's two, two of them, actually. And also, we have the Linux kernel, Linux kernel. This VM architecture to allow us to support some functionality like SSU, OK? And also, this uh, Linux kernel give us some new capability of supporting different packaging style for SN9K. One example is going to be the golden, golden ISO. Golden ISO, we call it GISO. The golden ISO, what's, what is that? So now if you have uh, ISO9K, you might have a list of package you need to manage, right? You have the, the image itself, you have service pack, you have smooth, also you have configuration, right? So the golden ISO facility is a script actually allow you to build an ISO image yourself. In that ISO image, you can put everything together. You can easily build that yourself. Your service pack, your, your image, your smooth, and also the configuration. You can build them together as a sim, single ISO image. When your system is booted up with that ISO image, everything will be there. You don't have to install the smooth yourself. You don't have to actually apply that configuration yourself. The initial configuration will be applied automatically with this. Actually, that's very easy. You can take a look. And uh, we have XR, 32-bit XR. We have now XR 64-bit. Then one big topic is actually how, how can we migrate, right? Migrate. The general rule, general rule is if you want to migrate to uh, EXR, first you should upgrade your GSA with the classic XR, the 32-bit XR, corresponding to 
the version of EXI you want to migrate to. Uh, sounds a little company. Let me give you an example. If you want to migrate from 6, 613 to 642 image EXR, from CXR to EXR, the first step you should take is to upgrade this box to a 642 CXR. And then update your FPD, very important. The FPD is required. Update your FPD. That's the whole reason you want to know this. And then after that, migrate to the EXR. That's the general recommendation. So that's the step you should follow, OK, when you do the migration. Very important. So there's certain migrating, migration check you need to do before you do that. I will leave it here. I'm not going to read, read through that. There's certain hardware requirement, and also the, the operational state is recommended. All your hardware in the GSA you want to migrate to be in active state. Don't put anything down. If you put anything down, like a nine car, you put it in down state. After migration, the nine car cannot put up in that GSA anymore. Okay? So be sure you have this. Okay? And also, uh, Cisco, we have a, a tool also can help you to do the migration. CSM, if you want to check, it's fully automated, and all the, the pre check also automated in there. You can check that. Okay? Okay. That's. Uh, Oh, actually, everything I, I have. Uh, we a little bit over time, but uh, if you have questions, feel free to uh, approach me, and uh, we can discuss our hang here for uh, a, little bit, a little bit time. So feel free, OK? Again, uh, thank you very much. And uh, uh, we have uh, several parties coming. Uh, today is a CCA party. Maybe tomorrow is another party. Enjoy all the party, and enjoy all your Cisco knife. Okay, thank you.